Hi there. Do you sometimes wake up in the morning with the sinking feeling that things are just not headed in the right direction? Maybe you're worried about affording college for your kids or paying your mortgage. Or maybe you're frustrated by the fact that the stable, comfortable lifestyle your parents had seems impossible for you to attain. Or maybe you once had that stable, comfortable lifestyle, and now, no matter how much you try, you just can't seem to make ends meet. Does this sound familiar? I bet it does. Do you blame yourself? Well, don't. Because for the past 40 years, the American middle class has gotten slowly, surely, purposefully, and not terribly gently, screwed. How the middle class got screwed. And there weren't even any long walks on the beach or fondue involved. In the 50s and 60s, a family could do pretty well on just a single income. One parent worked, and that was usually enough to buy a home, a car, send the kids to college, and retire comfortably, maybe even to Florida to become a famous shuffleboard legend. But by the mid-1970s, the screwing had begun. Most people didn't know they were getting screwed. They just knew that one income was no longer enough. So the second parent, usually mom, had to start working to maintain the same standard of living. Sure, some folks entered the workforce by choice, but all too often, it was an economic necessity. Both parents working meant added costs for childcare as the price of a home and education and healthcare began to skyrocket. By the 1980s, even with two incomes, the average American family still couldn't make ends meet. What could they do? Well, most people thought if we just work harder. So both parents started working longer and longer hours, creating an army of latchkey kids. But even that wasn't enough to keep up. Middle-class families were left with no choice but to take out huge loans to pay for college and housing. Eventually, they were forced to put health care, their car, even basic living expenses on credit. So where did this leave the average American middle-class citizen? Screwed, shafted, fearing for their finances and fearing for the future of their children and very, very deep in debt. Because while the middle class was busting its collective ass to keep up, a certain small percentage of our citizens were getting very, very rich indeed. That's right, the game was rigged. For the last several decades, the people in charge have made a dramatic shift from the values and policies that made our country great. Instead, they've set policies that rewarded the rich and stuck working families with the bill. Let's talk about a little thing called income equality. Back in the good old days, the CEOs earned maybe 15 to 20 times more than their workers. Today, they're making an average of 300 times more. This is crazy, you say. How could they have gotten away with this? Well, it certainly wasn't by putting America's interests first. One way the big corporations started earning more money was by eliminating jobs in the US and taking them overseas. CEOs complained that American wages were too high. So they moved the jobs to countries with no minimum wage or no rules to protect worker safety or the environment. The CEOs also worked hard to give unions a bad name. It's easy to forget that a lot of the rights we take for granted, like weekends and 40-hour work weeks, were won by the unions. But despite that crucial legacy, the number of union members has dropped off dramatically. So now when CEOs want to force lower wages, cut benefits, ship more jobs overseas, and give themselves huge raises, there's no one there to fight back. It turns out that without the collective bargaining power of unions, we all just get easier and easier to screw. Taxes. And what about taxes? In the days of Leave it to Beaver, the idea that the very rich could afford to pay more in taxes than the middle class was accepted on a bipartisan level. Presidents from Eisenhower to Nixon believed in progressive taxation as a matter of simple equity and justice. But taxes for the richest Americans have come down at a continuous clip since the 1960s, which would be fine, except that the middle class has been left to pick up the tab. Are you starting to recognize a trend here? That's right. It turns out there's a reason the rich get richer, mainly because they're not paying their fair share. For instance, while a hedge fund manager is making millions, he's likely paying a lower tax rate than his secretary who's making thousands. And major companies like ExxonMobil, BP, KPMG, and hundreds of others make billions each quarter, but somehow don't end up with any tax liability at the end of the year. How do they accomplish this? By sending high-priced lobbyists to 
to Washington, D.C. to help rewrite the tax code. Those crafty devils. Look, Wall Street is all about investments, and probably one of the most lucrative investments they've ever made has been in Washington, D.C. Over $1 million a day on lobbying alone. And that investment in the form of these lobbyists has been really productive. Not only have they made their taxes disappear, but they've changed the whole rule book on what's legal. Before the crash, the rush to make outrageous profits with no threat of regulation led to more creative investment products. As a result, lending became more and more predatory, which led to a gold rush mentality until the bubble inevitably burst. And at the same time they were making these dubious investments, the big banks developed a business model designed to fleece every last penny from their customers. That meant $40 overdraft fees and outrageous interest rates. It meant charging $3 to use another bank's ATM when the actual cost to them was pennies. Back in the day, we had laws that kept banks from charging outrageous interest rates and actually protected consumers. So here we are, totally screwed. It wasn't an accident and it wasn't destiny. The middle class were slowly shafted by the richest 2% a small group of powerful, wealthy people and corporations who were able to make the government work for them and not the vast majority of the American people. Feel like fighting back? I thought so. Well, look, there are a lot of very rich, powerful people who have really enjoyed f***ing everyone over and buying new yachts and third vacation homes. And since those people are the ones who got us here, it's not going to be their theories that lead us out of this mess. The solutions are going to have to come from all of us. We're going to have to rebalance the tax code to make sure that rich folks are paying their fair share. We're going to have to fix the laws that let Wall Street play by one set of rules while the rest of us play by another. We're going to have to make health insurance and a college education a lot more affordable for middle class families. And that's just a start. It's a big challenge. But the good news is, there are a heck of a lot more of us than there are of them. And that means we can win this battle. We won't get screwed sitting down, or standing up for that matter, or in any other weird position. In fact, screw them, and their greedy, short-sighted thinking that got us here. It's time for all of us to rebuild the American dream and make it accessible for everybody. So I wanna hear from you. What do you think politicians should do to get the system working for the middle class? Please sign up to take part in the Rebuild the Dream meetups on July 16th and 17th. Change is gonna have to come from us. I'm ready to get to work on this, and I hope you'll join me. <laughs>